Things are not what they appear in Superliminal, the clever new puzzle game where perception truly is reality. It's a mind-bending journey through a world of optical illusions and dream logic that is guaranteed to leave your head spinning. It's also one of my favorite games of the year, offering a perfect mix of creative puzzles and light jazz. Never underestimate the soothing sounds of light jazz. Do you feel anxious whenever you need to solve one of life's many problems? Do you prefer to ignore the issue and just hope that it goes away? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you may want to check yourself into the Pierce Institute, where they'll use a patent-pending form of dream therapy to get to the root of the problem and force you to look at your life in a brand new way. There's just one catch. There's a small chance you're going to get stuck in that dream without any way of waking up. That's the dilemma we face in Superliminal. The testing chambers all seem to work properly, but the damn simulation isn't letting us exit. This forces us to break down the walls and explore our surroundings, which leads to a series of increasingly trippy scenarios that are all tied together by an alarm clock. In order to escape this dream world, we'll first need to understand the constantly changing logic and solve a bunch of puzzles, all while Dr. Glenn Pierce works hard to bring us out of our deep sleep. Now, between the testing chambers and the female robot voice, there's a lot about Superliminal's setup that's gonna remind you of Portal. But guys, don't dismiss this as another clone, because the game knows that you've played Portal and goes out of its way to toy with all of your expectations. Instead of playing with Portals, a lot of the puzzles revolve around depth perception. This is the rare game where you can grow and shrink items based on how you're looking at them. It's a concept that'll be used early on to build simple stairs or ramps to the exit door, and then innovated on over and over until there's nothing left to do with the gimmick. What I love about Superliminal is how varied the puzzles are. There was never a point where it felt like they were leaning too heavily on one type of solution, mostly because each of the nine chapters has its own unique spin on the concept. They're items that'll multiply every time you touch them. Levels where you're literally walking on the walls, a labyrinth that wants you to look the wrong way, and a whole section that hopes you'll embrace the white space. This is one of the few times where I had no idea where the game was headed, and I was surprised at every turn. It's the weirdness and its ability to constantly shift the perspective that made me fall in love with Superliminal. The fairly straightforward story helps to anchor the trippy visuals and more outlandish puzzles, keeping what could have been a crazy acid-fueled roller coaster ride from spiraling out of control. It's baffling and confusing in all the right ways, and I especially like the message that the game leaves us with. I found the conclusion to not only be emotionally satisfying, but also strangely relevant to where I am in my real life. The whole experience left a big impact on me, which I wasn't expecting going in. Now, if I had to look for negatives, I suppose I could bring up the easy difficulty. There are a few tricky puzzles here and there, but most of the sections will only need a few tries to complete. I ended up beating the game in around three hours, but somebody could probably whip through the whole thing in like 80 or 90 minutes. In that sense, the game's a whole lot closer to the original Portal than its 2011 sequel, both in length and in scope. I like the bite-sized nature of it, especially since every level in the game is so damn memorable. Even after I knew the solutions, I wanted to immediately jump back in and play in the dream world that they've constructed. I suppose a lot of this comes down to how they play with the visual presentation. There are a lot of different moods and styles that they're going for in this game. I like how it all works together cohesively. From the cold and almost horror-tinged backstage area, to the drudgery of always waking up in the same room, to the way the washed-out white spaces make you almost feel like you're alone. There's a whole lot to unpack here, and I love how it all comes together with a nice, slightly funky jazz beat. Superliminal is an absolutely spellbinding puzzle game that's gonna stick with me for a long time to come.
From the moment I solved my first puzzle, I knew I was going to fall in love with Super Liminal. This is a devilishly clever puzzle game that toys with your expectations every step of the way. From using depth perception to grow and shrink objects to walking on the walls, every part of this dream world feels unique and special. It's a polished game with a well-written story and one surprise after another. And while it's a little easy and may not have the big reveal of a game like Portal, Superliminal offers a wildly inventive ride that also has one of the best endings of the year. I'm telling you, don't sleep on this game. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite dream world in a video game? There are actually a lot of dream worlds in new and old games, but the only one I can think of right now is that level in the Simpsons arcade game. Ugh, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently hard at work on our big holiday special, which will debut next week. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.